Hey, this channel and its videos are intended for adults only and not for children. No kids allowed. Hey, welcome back to my channel, or welcome to my channel. Um, just a heads up, there'll be a lot of choking and possibly having to stop because I have a runny nose. No, I don't have the virus. Um, it's spring. I have seasonal allergies. Um, with everything going out, out in the world today, with everything going on in the world today, sorry, I'm doing this late. My hours are so screwed up because I've been so stressed out. Um, with everything going on in the world today, like, it's hard to, like, you're supposed to limit how much you go out, but having seasonal allergies with this virus going around, like, it's not good, because every time you blow your nose or cough, like, people don't know what's wrong with you, or you sneeze, which isn't even a symptom, but they don't know that. Most of the symptoms are, like, sore throat, shortness of breath, fever. Um, unfortunately, I was blessed with year, year-long allergies. Um, people have been cutting their grass because they've been stuck at home, and it, it's just... It sucks, so my hours have pretty much switched to nighttime hours. Like, it's almost like I'm working the night shift, which isn't good for your health because you really need sunlight, but that's how I'm living right now, um, living the dream. I know a lot of people complain about, like, isolation, and I don't... This sounds really shitty, but I don't really, really care that much about it. I'm not very empathetic about it because I've pretty much been in isolation for the past five years and and nobody gave a shit about me when I, I said like how difficult it was. So whatever. Fend for yourself. I'm here if you need to talk. I'll give you that much. <laughs> but anyway, today we're playing our first Xbox One game. This is actually an Xbox One X version of Gears of War 5. Um, seeing all this next gen footage, and they were doing the Gears of War 5 demo um, with on the Xbox Series X, and I'm like, it's called Gears 5 now. It's not even called Gears of War 5, which is weird. But I was like, hey, I remember that game. It looked pretty cool. I bought it. I had every intention of playing it. But it was during a season where a lot of stuff was going on. I was working a lot. I had the money to burn. Like, it was like an impulse buy. Like, when you have a lot of... When you're making decent money, like... You impulse buy a lot. So, I have, like, a lot of these games that I just bought on a whim. But this is actually a good game. And... Dare I say, like, one of the better Gears games? Now, hear me out. It's not for the reasons that you think. I think it's a better Gears game because it's more... I don't know. The level design and the... The um, environments are more interesting. Like, that's it. Like, I've never been sucked in. To the Gears storyline. I heard this has a good story. Between Gears 4 and Gears 5. The um, tone of the games have definitely changed. They definitely still have their gore. And their darker moments. But I almost feel like. It's the Disney version. Of Gears of War. And um, I just say that. Because the characters are um, younger. And they just seem more. Um. I haven't gotten far into this game. I'm just... And I've never finished 4. Really, I've only... 
beat part one, um, most of part two. Oh, yeah, I finished the last part of part two for whatever reason. I think that's around the time PlayStation 4 came out, and I traded in my Xbox 360 before I got another one, and then I got the game, but I never went back and played it for whatever reason. I need to. Um, especially since they're compatible with that Xbox One X. It's such a waste, um, the Xbox One X, because it's, it's really what Microsoft should have started out with. It, like, it costs the same amount as the original Xbox One, and it's, it's really powerful, and the ports on it are, are really good, and games like this, I mean, they pretty much play the same. I will say, um... I feel like the enemies die faster a little bit. The guns feel a little bit more powerful than they did in the earlier Gears of War. And maybe that's in my mind, but I feel like I'm mowing through enemies faster. Now, um, you'll have to forgive me because I haven't played this game in roughly a year or however long it's been. But I feel like it's been close to a year. And I completely forgot how to play it. A matter of fact, I thought I had to play through this certain part that I forgot that I already beat. Like, I play this game in bursts. Like, every once in a while, like, I'll get, I'll get this, um, itch to play, like, some Xbox games because, I don't know, Halo and Gears are a guilty pleasure that I, that there's really nothing comparable on the PlayStation 4 as far as that goes, as far as what the game feels like. Um, I feel like Destiny feels a lot like the way Halo feels, but um, Halo 5 is its own beast. Like Halo 5 plays a lot different than the other Halos. They like modernized a lot of things. That game's gorgeous. Um, I expect to see a video of that sometime if I don't die. Um, yeah, so... The main character on the cover is female, but so far I've been mostly playing as guys, but this is the first act. But the acts are really long. And... There are quite a few levels before this, and before this, I played as another guy, like, in a flashback, so I don't know. I know a lot of people were complaining about playing as, like, a female character, like, lots of people, because Gears of War is supposed to be, like, this tough guy game or whatever, so I don't know. The character that that's supposedly the main character. She seems pretty cool. It's cool that they actually have a thought out single player campaign. There's a lot of story in this game, but again, I'm not invested in the Gears of War storyline. Um, I always played it for the gameplay. So I don't know. I don't know how this game will turn out. I expect to play more like, um, like I said, the Xbox One X, like the Xbox One, it's Microsoft's fault, but I don't know. They really, they really screwed their customers over. Like, honestly, like the Xbox system could, could have been like most of what everybody had in their house. Granted, it's more expensive, but I feel like, um, having that UHD player but when that the these consoles came out like most people didn't have um 4K TVs so they didn't have UHD players like most people still don't have UHD players i think that'll be a thing of the next gen um just microsoft got cocky with um the connect and and having to use the power with that, and then their system was underpowered, 
but it cost a hundred dollars more. And then Sony was desperate because they kind of made the same mistakes previous generations with releasing uh, um, a ridiculously expensive system. But I don't know, like. The PlayStation 5's press conference was really for developers, so I still don't know what to think about the PlayStation 5. Um, on paper, the Xbox Series X, which is a stupid name. They, I wish they would come out with a better name, just like Xbox One. Like Scarlet would have been a cool name, for sure, I think, anyway. Especially if they, like made the system like like bloody red or whatever that would have been cool like in green like freddy's sweater but neon green although I, I like the top of the little tower it has that little green piece of plastic it looks like it's glowing it must I, whatever they're using for that like it's really bright like it looks like a led light i'm sure people mod it So the only difference as far as gameplay that I can recall is you have this little robot buddy that can like fetch you weapons and help you out in battle and stuff like that. This is one of the best looking, um, probably the best look. I, I haven't played this on um, the base Xbox One. I only have the Xbox One X. That's what was on Dell's website. And... That's what I had a credit card for, and that's what they had. And I forgot there was like some E3. I think it was the E3 where they um, introduced like Cyberpunk 2077, and I just got really excited. I was like, I'm, I'm gonna probably need something really powerful. Now, if I get Cyberpunk, it'll probably be on the PlayStation 4. Although, I just played the demo of um, Resident Evil 3. And I will have to say the um, Xbox One X version looks quite a bit better, like with the reflections and the hair and the overall resolution. Usually, usually it's the difference is isn't that noticeable, but I did notice a pretty big difference. I'm still getting it for PlayStation Three. Um, Tomorrow I have to pick up Doom from GameStop. Doom Eternal. They had a um opening tonight, but I didn't want to be around a lot of possibly infected people. Um, so I'm gonna go tomorrow and bathe in hand sanitizer. And I might it sucks. But I might put all the game money that I had on pre orders down. On my purchase on Doom. I hate using Amazon, but I have to think about safety and things like that. Also, um, the more I go to GameStop right now, it encourages the retailer to stay open and put their employees at risk. Although, on the flip side, it's terrible to think that um, this virus is actually helping GameStop um, get a lot of, like, start earning money again, like, because people have nothing to do. Like, the reason why I'm getting Doom Eternal is because I'm stuck here more so than usual. Like, I know I stay home a lot, but still like to go out now i'm terrified to go to the grocery store i've never used any of those delivery apps i'm starting to think about using those like it's it's scary um but the truth about it is is even if it's even if the media is blowing it out of proportion like there's definitely something out there. People are getting sick. I know people that have family members so that have contracted it. So it's definitely real. And it's like not one of those like 
wives' tales kind of things. Like, not wives' tale, but like one of those rare things, like the lottery where you don't even know somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody. Like, it's, it's around enough where people I know, like, know people that are contracting it. So, um, yeah, like... What was I gonna say? Like, I, I'm filming this, like, my sleep cycle's so fucked up. It's- oh, what I was gonna say is... This thing's gonna be, like, part of everyday life, I feel like, like the seasonal flu, and... Eventually these places are gonna open again and we'll have to live with this. Hopefully our economy will recover um, All these poor people out of work like um, especially servers and stuff like that like and only getting a Thousand dollar checks, which is nice to get something period, but like if you're like a server or whatever um, and you don't have a significant other who's also getting a check, like, that's, that's, that's tough. Not only is it hard to get groceries, but let alone afford them, um, luckily places are being more lenient with rent and stuff like that, but it's scary, but at some point, This quarantine can only last but so long and like like I said like I feel like this is just gonna be like status quo like eventually they'll they'll probably have a vaccine um I know there's some controversy with some people like with vaccines and stuff like that but at the same time like, no matter how you feel, like, it's helped a lot of people. Like, you don't know anybody who has polio anymore. Or, like, um, if you got bit by an animal that had rabies or whatever, like, if you didn't get that shot the minute you start showing symptoms, it would, like, kill you. So, like, the vaccine... Like, within a year, like, maybe that'll be something that helps eliminate, like, people getting flu shots and stuff like that. I don't know. I don't know what the answer is, but... It's ridiculous. Like, I'm scared to death. Like, I gotta go to the doctors on, um... Towards the end of the month, and it's a shared building. On the other side of the building... Is a is a pulmonary specialist. I know that because um, I got over bronchitis one year and um, I was coughing up like bits of blood like um, for about a month. So I had to go to a pulmonary specialist. They had to make sure that I didn't have tuberculosis. Which with somebody who has anxiety and panic issues that that waiting period for the test wasn't the most fun let me tell you or just spitting up blood like just being casual waking up in the morning and then brushing your teeth everything seems fine and then like like me like I always have like not to be gross but we're playing a game where people are getting their arms blown off like Like, you have, like, a white sink, and then all of a sudden you see dark spots when you, like, spin in it. Like, that's jarring. Like, um, people who don't have anxiety problems, I feel like I hate talking about mental illness because it's talked about so much. But I'm just talking about my experiences. Um, people that don't have anxiety, like, have been anxious before, and they're like... Oh, you just need to get over it. And it's like... There's been times where, like, I've had anxiety. And I I, I thought that, like... 
to the point of thinking her like irrational like that like I was gonna I was having a heart attack like it's it's scary and I've gotten to the point where like it's changed my breathing pattern where I was like losing feeling and like my hand like I I, the first time I had a really bad panic attack, I tried to dial like 911 and I couldn't because I had no control over my hands because I was breathing in my own air. So I was mostly breathing in carbon dioxide. I was on the verge of basically passing out and I couldn't dial the phone to call 911. And I remember um, I had a friend that had an unvaccinated dog who happened to um, lick me in the mouth. I don't have any sores in my mouth, but it still freaked me out. And there's like a, like a, you, there's an incubation period with rabies. Like it's extraordinary, rabies is extraordinarily rare, but when you have anxiety and panic disorders, like you freak out over irrational things, depending on like what, your triggers are. I'm somewhat of a germaphobe, and I know once you start showing symptoms of rabies, rabies is ironically like one of my biggest fears of all time. I don't know where it came from. Like the movie Cujo doesn't freak me out. Like I don't know. Like I just. Rabies to me is like one of the most horrible diseases that nobody talks about. And people don't vaccinate their animals, um, which is your choice. But the fact that people don't vaccinate their animals, um, most first world countries like rabies, as far as in domesticated animals have been virtually eradicated. So anyway, I was like so stressed out, like my muscles were stiffening up and I, I, I seriously thought that there was like, I was showing like signs, like some neurological shit was going on. Like my neck was like cramping up. Um, I was panicking in my sleep, which is the worst feeling. Like when you have really bad panic disorder, it feels like when you're in the elevator and it goes down too fast, it feels like that or being on a roller coaster. It's that feeling, it's the worst feeling in the world when you're being stationary and nothing's actually going on around you. <coughs> this video is so long for, like, having allergies and coughing. I feel like there's a lot of, um, story in this game. For this type of game, I almost feel like it's unnecessary. But I haven't played the whole thing from people who have. They said the narrative's worth it. But, like I said, this is one of the better Gears games. I haven't played much of 3. Um, 4 seemed alright, but it, it seemed even more Disney than this. Like, 4 seemed almost lighthearted. I do like that. Um, it started with 3, like... Um, how it's colorful because Gears of War 1 and 2 are really just dark and brown and gross um I have the ultimate edition of Gears like honestly like I don't have the um Xbox Live Game Pass I think that's an incredible deal for like $14 to be able to play all those games, especially when a lot of those games are new. But if I do get an Xbox One X game, um, I get it physically, like, unless, like, I got Cuphead or whatever because they don't have a physical version of that, and that game looks incredible. And it plays incredible. And I still don't know how that editor couldn't beat the tutorial level that's insane I'm not even that great at that game I can at least get to the middle of it I feel like I could get farther if I was more dedicated but I have so many games I'm not even bragging because it's like nothing I'm proud about but yeah so um I think that like I could actually 
if I really wanted to. If I finished, like, one library of, like, a console, I feel like I could finish all my Xbox One X games. Not including, like, the compatible, like, 360 ones. Just the, like, the Xbox One X games. But usually, like, when there's a multi-platform thing, I'll, I'll get it on the PlayStation 4 just because I, I like the environment. Like I said, like, I know that Resident Evil 4 and even Cyberpunk, and even when Metro Exodus came out, and... Red Dead and Far Cry 5. I know that they look better on the Xbox One X running at native 4K, but... I just like the PlayStation 4 environment more, but, like, with the two systems that they've been talking about... Until the PlayStation 5 has a better conference, like, right now, like, I'm more sold... On the Xbox One X, if it wasn't for the PlayStation exclusives, like, franchises that I really like, like, The Last of Us, I'm curious of where, um, although I didn't really like the, um, first one as much as everyone else, be but I don't think I'm playing it right. I need to just replay it from the beginning, because I think there's a game that I would really like there. Horizon Zero Dawn. I actually thought Death Stranding was pretty cool. Um, I love the Metal Gear series. I hope that Konami treats it right at some point. Um, I hope Uncharted continues in some capacity. Um, Days Gone was a really cool game and concept. Um, I liked it for the most part. I don't know what happened that made me stop playing it but there was something it wasn't because it was a bad game it i don't know if it if i felt like i was just doing the same things over and over again and it felt similar or what but something made me stop playing but i thought it was a pretty cool game i really need to go back to it god of war um Trying to think if there's anything else. Um, just the Japanese weird games that come out for it, but I feel like Sony's now doing like what Microsoft did this generation and got cocky, like like their backwards compatibility. Like they're they're talking about having almost a hundred of the most popular games. Like those aren't the games that I just want to play. I don't want to play triple-a sony games all the fucking time like i don't i don't care like i i want some basic like emulation that may or may not work and then they can tweak it in the future if things get better but i was expecting at least playstation and playstation 2 compatibility they're more worried about sound and all the shit that I really don't care about as far as games go. I just want to play my games. There's, like, no good way to play um, PlayStation 1 and PlayStation 2 games unless you have a decent CRT TV. Because those... Whatever puts out the video, like, it doesn't do the, the best job... In higher resolutions like even like if you use component cables on the PlayStation 2 even when I had a CRT television that was capable of component cables like it, it didn't look as good as like say like if you had like an, the original Xbox running on those things granted that system was more powerful but there's just something wrong and then it, it looks so bad on like lc d televisions in my personal opinion you can get like these adapters really the only thing that you can get that's worth a damn it's like three hundred dollars like um i can't think of what it's called that little like japanese like box that 
God, my mind slipped me. But there's like this box that you can get from Japan that plays like retro consoles, but you have to get all this extra stuff. Like the remote's not even in English. You have to like order a sticker if you want the remote in English. Like people have printed out um, stickers, but like there's like these adapters that are Chinese. Like I heard they work amazing for the um, original PlayStation, but on um, PlayStation 2, like the games are like already dark if um you use like component cables but there's so many good games on the playstation 2 and i wish they like just had some emulation it doesn't have to work all the time like that's how pc emulation is like not all the games work and then they get patched over time if like enough people complain about it like that's all i want it but if I go to GameStop, like, I might use all my pre-order money on, on Doom because, first of all, I don't want to lose my pre-order money if, um, GameStop does decide to close for a while and it seriously hurts them. They're already hurting and the unfortunate, unfortunately, this, um, whole, this pandemic has been profitable for them. So, but I don't know what the government's going to mandate. And second, like, it sucks because they're not paying their employees. Like, if they get sick or they have to leave, I don't want to keep on going to a store where there's people always in it and they're touching everything because people, like, use GameStop as a daycare center. Um, a lot of kids, like, that get the virus, like, they show almost, like, no symptoms whatsoever, and that's good that it doesn't, like, kill them or whatever, but they're getting it, like, on everything if they're touching everything, and it's just, like, even if it's, like, unrealistic, like, my stress level, my peace of mind, like, I don't know if I could deal with it. Um, Amazon at least gives it a, f a few days to air out. So, um, I might have to resort to ordering from Amazon as much as I hate that, but that might be something I have to do. <laughs> and then the groceries thing... I don't know how that's going to work because I think everybody's using it. Um, the nearest grocery store around here, like, people are, like, fearless. Um, last Sunday, they restocked really well, but I haven't been out in the public since then. actually had a doctor's appointment over the phone, which is really, really crazy. Like, at first, it really weirded me out be even though I'm um, what you would consider, like, a millennial, like, that really, I don't know, it was just so surreal to me, like, how crazy technology is, like, when you can talk to two people on video, on a phone, I know FaceTime, I don't like it, it's just so weird and alien, Skype's a little bit better, but it's just, I don't know. I guess being a shy person, I always like that barrier of of the phone. And even with strangers, like, talking on the phone, I sound like an insecure mess. And maybe I am, but whatever. It was just weird. But, but then after I did it, I was like, this is cool. Like, if I don't feel like going to, like, an appointment, I can, I can just use this tool. And this is cool, because then... I can have an appointment, like, sometimes, like, I don't know, like, I'm stressed out, I don't feel like going, and it's just, like, you can just, like, talk to somebody, like, on the video phone, the comfort of your home, you know, chilling, that was, that was really cool, because I didn't want to be in the waiting room with all these, like, fucking sick people, potentially sick people because you can have the virus and not show symptoms for up to 14 days <sighs> so 
sorry about talking about the virus and not about the game, but that's that's how my channel rolls. Plus, there's so much fucking story in it. This video, there's only so much I can talk about this game in 40 minutes about its mechanics, especially when it's Gears of War. Like, you duck, cover, shoot. Um, the story takes place sometime after the fourth game, but the fourth game takes place after the third game, after... I probably need to play the fourth game, because I have no idea, like, why the cog or whatever you're fighting is even back. Like, when I was playing the fourth game, I was fighting robots and stuff like that, so something happens. I don't know. This game seems just way more interesting than the fourth game, so I've played this game more than I've played the fourth game. But um, if you have an HDR t TV, like, you, you're really in for an awesome experience because this video is not going to do the graphics justice. First of all, YouTube's going to compress it. Um, this is a 60 frames per second game, so I'm going to force 60 frames on it. That's going to lower the video quality down even more. But, like, if you have this game in HDR, it looks like a completely different game. Like, it's running on a completely different system. Um, most games that use HDR, I feel like... Like, the, um, difference is minute. You're like, oh... The candlelights stick out more than usual. Like, usually the game just seems darker, and then they, like, just light up certain parts more like this. But with all the neon and the particle effects and everything, and just the detail and the colors and everything, like, this uses, like, a wide... It obviously uses, like, a wider color gamut than most games like the only other game I've seen that uses HDR to its full effect is probably Horizon Zero Dawn but I don't know like that game on HDR like I almost feel like that game's like too bright like I but a lot of the games, like, they have, like, force HDR where they just, like, jack up the contrast and stuff like that and just, like, have a few things that, like, poke out. Um, there are some games that ha have HDR on, um, on Xbox One X but not on PlayStation 4. And I feel like that's because they're forcing it where this game really had a you can tell this game had HDR in mind when they made it and it's beautiful like because sometimes I'm like what is the fucking point of HDR but then you get something that truly utilizes like HDR and it, it's like a world of difference and this game looks completely completely different like it makes the graphics look so much better even though it's like the same amount of like models like aesthetically it just looks better like the darker is a shadow like the lights on their back look cooler and stuff like that the flames are like brighter like the greens are greener the reds are redder this is coming from a colorblind person so i feel like it there's even more value like if I'm appreciating like the HDR and the higher like color color gamut then there's definitely something there for somebody that can see colors normally I imagine it's even better but yeah I don't know what's going on um it's pretty exciting to see an Xbox One X game, but like for this new generation, like I don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of conflicted. Like Sony definitely needs a conference for normal people. We need to see what the console looks like. We need to see some games or whatever, because even if I don't see games for the X, and this is assuming that I can even afford the system, because right now I'm like in no position. But if I could. 
right now, like the Xbox Series X almost seems more interesting to me just because the studios they acquired, they acquired um, Ninja Theory, who made Hellblade, which was one of my favorite games of whatever year that came out. I think it was two years ago. So, um, like 2018. Maybe it came out in 2017. I can't remember. And they're getting Hellblade 2. Um, that's an amazing company. Um, Double Fine. They take forever to come out with games, but they're always really creative. Like, I love Psychonauts. Um, they made the point-and-click adventures, like, full throttle and stuff like that. Those games are, like, awesome. Um, they're getting, I hope I'm saying this right, Obsidian who um, just, just made The Outer Worlds. So that's pretty incredible that they got that because they The Outer Worlds was an, from the little bit I played of it. That, that's awesome. So they have some studios. Um, Sony did acquire Insomniac, which means that they'll get another amazing Spider-Man game, but I don't know. They, all they did was talk about the hardware and not the games, and I, I just want to play the games, like, right now, like, just because of the present, just based on the presentations, like, the, the Xbox looks more, more fun. And I want the system that will get more fun. But I know that the PlayStation 5 will get um, the obscure Japanese game support and stuff like that. Um, I don't know. We'll see. But right now, just based on everything that Microsoft's kind of do. Because almost like, it seems like the underdog of the previous generation always seems to do better and the next generation like Sony was all about the consumer um, this generation with the PlayStation 4 and it helped them out because they had a hard time with the PlayStation 3 despite some of them having some amazing exclusive but luckily they were remastered and re-released on the PlayStation 4 so people missed out on them got to play them but the Xbox 360 in my opinion clearly Clearly, clearly won the generation of PlayStation 3, and um, I guess it would be 7th gen. It had, like, better ports and everything like that. Um, but I don't know, like, Sony's seems more worried about... <sighs> I don't know. That was a, a developer's conference. I'm really not going to compare apples to oranges at this time like i feel like microsoft's conference even though they didn't show a lot of the games they showed what it was capable of it was just more gamer centric where the playstation 5's conference felt like a math lecture like i just want the most fun engaging experiences um the fact that microsoft is focusing more on backwards compatibility is awesome um playstation 5's approach to backwards compatibility and their limited backwards compatibility is kind of turning me off a little bit but anyway this is gears 5 it seems awesome so far if you have a way to play it, it's also on pc i would definitely check it out i hope you're all doing well please stay safe um thank you so much and take care bye if you want to like comment and subscribe Thanks for watching.